maybe I should start out one of my sessions with, hey, all you cool cats and kittens. But see, you didn't watch Tiger King, so you don't know all, you don't know anything <laughs> nope. about that. All righty, everybody. Thank you so much for attending today. Um, this program is being brought to you by Residence Life and Housing Services. And we are here with the amazing Brian Props. So everybody give it up for Brian Prop right now. They're, they got videos off, but trust me, Brian, people are clapping. All right. He's a formal NHL All-Star. He's also the Director of Strategic Relationships at WCRE. He's going to tell you a little bit about that as well. Uh, Brian Park was a part of the great Flyers hockey team who pushed through the playoffs and made it to the three Stanley Cup finals, which is awesome. Brian George joined WCRE as the Director of Strategic Relationships. He serves as a C-level brand ambassador for WCRE. Um, and he, in, he's introduced the firm um, to new markets, clients, and industry. But he works very closely with WCRE in sales professionals to promote brand widely and to help businessmen continue to grow in the southern New Jersey. Jersey and especially the Philadelphia area and Philadelphians love him. We love him. We're happy that he's here today. Give it up for Brian. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. It's a little rainy, but it's, uh, it's at least we're out of, at home and safe. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So what have you been up to? Uh, not too much. The last uh, three or three weeks, I'm just catching up with uh, all the things that I had from uh, the last few months. And so mm -hmm. I'm just uh, staying at home and, uh, Try to stay busy and you know but uh with with working with uh, wolf and uh bancroft brain injury and the flyers alumni you know it keeps me busy and, and now i'm doing more interviews and things like that that i can uh, connect with other people too all right all right all right so do you have any funny uh quarantine stories for us is there you know <laughs> has anything like i mean this has changed everybody's everyday walk of life and normal patterns do you have any funny stories uh, not too many because I, I've been on, on, in the house the last uh, three months, uh, three three weeks, just uh, staying at home and trying to stay stay healthy and and uh, just you know it, you, you have to because you know it, it's New Jersey and New York are are bad so we needed to uh, con control that first uh, but hopefully another couple couple of weeks and it'll be we'll have a little time to get outside a little bit more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we have a lot of Flyers fans here. They want to hear about your time with the Flyers and they want to also hear about what you're doing currently now with the business, uh, with your business model during strategic planning. So which one do you want to talk about first? Because we're really going to just give you the reins and let you take this thing. So which one do you want to talk about? Yeah, well, why don't we talk about the Flyers, you know, because, oh, okay. uh, you know, when I was uh, 15, I played junior hockey and uh, won a scoring there. And then, then I played three years in junior hockey where we had good teams. And then I got drafted uh, to the Flyers right at the start in 1990, uh, 1979. Okay. That's the, the year that we had the streak of uh, 35 undefeated. Yeah. And I was a rookie there along with a couple of rookies. And so it was a good way to get started. And then uh, we went to the finals my first year. And, uh, you know, I've been here ever since the last 40 years. I was 11 years with the Philadelphia Flyers, a little bit yeah. with Boston, three years at Mon Minnesota, and then I finished with Hartford. And then I ended up in France. Uh, so that, that was 16 years of my life. Okay. And uh, then I, you know, I worked at the Medford Ice Rink uh, for three years, uh, running the whole rink. And then I got the job with the Flyers as their announcer on radio for the next nine years. And then I went to the judge group for five years. And now I'm five years at Wolf Commercial Real Estate. Nice, 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 nice. Now, a lot of people haven't even been to a Stanley Cup once. I mean, I can tell you that I've never played hockey. I've tried the ice, the ice of me, we don't work that well, but you went to three. Like, talk to us about that. Like, what's the feeling? Is it a general, a, a strong adrenaline rush? Like, how does it feel? I mean, a lot of people have not had the opportunity to accomplish that. I mean, you have. So tell us about that. Yeah, so like, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's, you know, I, I played with Bob Clark. He was the greatest leader, uh, leader of all time. And I was very quiet my first couple of years. Like I didn't talk, uh, talk too much. You know, the reporters like had uh, to just try to get me to talk a little bit, but it took, it took me a couple of years just to, I was shy. And then, uh, and then as, as time went on, like uh, Clark uh, played after 55 years with me. And then we went to uh, Dave Poulin and Mark Howe. So we became the leaders of that. But, uh, you know, it was the first year was uh, really, really uh, special because uh, 35 undefeated as a, a, a record for all time um, without a loss. And then we went to the finals that year. We, that, that year, the, we, we played against the Islanders. 
Yeah. Um, at that time, it was one against 16. So that's why we played against each other in the finals. And after that, the conferences changed. So it was a lot tougher to get uh, past the better teams. And so, but for me, it was really great to get a good start that way. And, uh, you know, we lost an overtown in game six. Uh, in game six, if we game, if we win guy game seven, could have made a big difference. And then absolutely, yeah. And I was into the uh, and and a lot of, like like just so you know, a lot of these people that play the playoffs never play a playoff game. And oh, you know, okay. to go to the finals, it's really tough, and to win it is even tougher. I can and, imagine. Uh, you know, it's, but uh, you know, I I was there uh, three years with the Flyers and two other times with Boston and Minnesota. Okay, so a lot of a lot of Flyers fans have teams that they absolutely hate. They're like, "This is not my team." Like, I will root against Penguins. them. <laughs> oh yeah. So did you have? A, I mean, obviously the Penguins is a given. I mean, I I, I couldn't stand them, especially in the two. I think what 2006 to 2016. I couldn't yeah. stand the Pens. So, do you have a team that you're absolutely like, absolutely not? Don't like this team. Don't like their organization. Any of them at all? Well, I, I do. I, I I love to play against uh, the Rangers and, okay. and Boston uh, because uh, they were rivalries too. So like you always got better better for that, and so we uh, we always wanted to shut them out and uh, and then uh, keep them quiet. Yeah. Uh, but it was uh, for me. It was it was nice because we played on the East Coast coast, and so like we tra we didn't have to travel as much as like the other teams in the other conferences. And so it was close, you know, we, we bust to New York Rangers, the Islanders, New Jersey and, and, and uh, Washington. So we, we were at home a lot more than all these other teams. But, uh, you know, for me being there my first 11 years, it was so special because uh, we had good, good teams and good uh, clean, uh, police, close uh, people that we know. And, uh, and, and we won a lot too. So the coaching right. was good, but the leadership was uh, outstanding. Uh, you know, with, like I said, with Bob Clark and with uh, Dave Poole and, and Mark Howe and Brad McCrimmon. Yeah, and me, all special uh, guys, all leaders, special guys. You know, you, 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 you keep uh, moving along every, every year and then try to put the teams together so that you, you have a chance to win. But uh, I, I just want to let everyone to know that we just played for each other. We didn't pay for, play for points. We just played to win every game. And uh, that's why it made us a, a much better. Right, 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 right. So tell us a little bit about WCRE. Like, what does that establish? You know, what exactly do you do? I mean, we gave a brief bio, but what are some of your day-to-day -day things? Um, if students wanted to start making some moves right now uh, while they're in college so that they could work for a business like this, like what are some of the things they need to do? Yeah, so like uh, I, I'm working with uh, Wolf Commercial Real Estate the last five and a half years. And uh, when I was there, I started it with, uh, with, with, with Jason Wolf. And then I, I, right at the start, I got my, uh, my, my license. So I'm a broker. And so that, that's, that's important to do that. You have to put the time in to get the license first. And then if, even if it's commercial or residential, residential it doesn't really ma make that much difference, but I'm just doing a commercial. And uh, the way I work it with, uh, with our, our company is that like I, I use my face and name to do a little yeah. better for, for the company. And uh, I, know, you know, I, can, I know a lot of people from Philadelphia and uh, New Jersey that uh, you know, I, I, we 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 find some spaces for them, and then what I normally do is like, if we find a, a property that we want, then I'll work with another broker on our room, and then just kind of split the commission. Okay, very nice. Now, do people recognize you? Like, I think that like when they walk into you know your business, are they like, oh my gosh, you're Brian Prop? Like, does that ever happen? Uh, every, every once in a while, but uh, everybody knows me because I've been here for so long and okay. uh, with all the companies that I've been working with uh, before. Uh, so I just, I'm just known as Brian, a regular guy, but uh, you know, and so like, uh, and, and also me as the ambassador of the Philadelphia Flyers, I wow. go to every home game. So wow. I meet a lot of other people and companies that are there. And so, you know, it's just, uh, it's a lot of people have been knowing me the last 40 years and, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, just, just so that everybody knows, like I had a massive stroke 
uh, almost five years ago okay. where I couldn't talk. I couldn't uh, use my right hand. So I had to relearn how to, how to talk and how to uh, do much better. And I still have aphasia. So sometimes the words get a little mixed up. So, uh, but, but it's like most hockey players, uh, they're, they're not as bad as me. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand it. Thank you for sharing that. So um, you've been to a lot of home games. You say you go to every single one. I've been to two Flyers games. I've been fortunate to go to two. One was right behind the glass and one was a little up. I mean, what is it like being on the ice? I mean, there's a lot of testosterone. It's a fast moving game. There's a lot of ice shards being thrown around. Like a lot of us have never been on a rink or have never been on the ice. So like explain how that is like being down there, being in the midst of the game. Well, it's, it's really exciting because uh, any, anytime that everybody goes to a live game, it, it's such a difference. Uh, you know, when uh, watching on TV, it's a lot different. Uh, so it's a lot faster. And, and if, you, if you're closer to the ice, it, it's, it's exciting and it goes, goes fast and then they, they, they're not sure what's going on. And so, so they get hit. hit. They, they, they love it every time, when, every time that they go to a live game. And so I've very been, been fortunate the last uh, four years to be the ambassador for the Philadelphia Flyers every home game. Uh, yeah, and then also did the radio for the Flyers for nine years, every game uh, in, in radio. So like that uh, part of my life, uh, like I love being with the Flyers and the, you know, their ambassador for uh, the team. And I'm also on the Flyers board of our Flyers alumni. And so I, I, I stay very active with all of that. But, you know, to go to every live game is, is so exciting. You, know, you have to, if you blink, you miss a lot, miss a lot of things. Justin, you're muted. <laughs> there we go. See, I was listening the whole time. I was like, this is good. Okay, so Brian, we have a few people who have some questions here for you, some of our students. So we're gonna go ahead and allow them to ask you the questions directly. So we are gonna begin with Marissa. Marissa, are you there? Yeah, I'm eating food though too, and I didn't want people to watch me eat my food, so I shut my camera off. But okay. um, so I'm a big fan of the Flyers. I started getting into hockey in about like eighth grade. My stepdad took me to my first Flyers game, and it was actually against the Rangers. And like the energy of the crowd is what made me really like the game. And then like, you know, just how it is that the Rangers game is a little bit different than your average game. So I really enjoyed going and um. Also, a couple years ago, I went to a networking event at the Phillies, and they talked about how they have people who do data analytics for them, and that's how they work out their strategies right. and stuff. And I'm a computer science major, and they make programs for that. And um, so that's something that also like got me really interested. Is like that would be a job that I would really like to have one day. But uh, strategically, like the Flyers were doing really well this season, especially you know right before the coronavirus like ended everything. And what do you think like? contributed the most strategy wise to help them, you know, do so well. And what do you think would have happened if we would have continued playing? And well, you think we we're, we're still hoping that they can still play in the playoffs, uh, maybe in uh, June or July, but uh, you have to wait and see. But uh, I think it's all about the coaching. Like if they, they had uh, three new coaches that are very experienced and uh, the, the younger players were, were playing really well, especially with Hart to be there as a, the goalie. And so like, it gives us a chance to win every every hockey game, and then uh, the the young defensemen really played really well too. So it's really exciting for the for the Philadelphia Flyers. Like if if they continue, I think that they have a chance to win a Stanley Cup, uh, even if it's this year. I agree. I agree. I'm I agree. A big Carter Hart fan. Well, so he's done such a good job, especially home yeah. games. Uh, but uh, it, it gives us a chance to win every game. Uh, but he's, he's 21 years age. And, but it's, that's what we've been looking for the last number of years, to have a really good goalie like that. Yeah. Thank you. So, Brian, do they bring you in as – I know you said you were a Flyers alumni. I see a lot of pictures of you still, still doing some stuff out there. Um, do they bring you in to uh, train or to mentor some of these young ones or – as they're getting into the game and they're maturing or do you watch, you watch from afar? I, I just watch from afar because like, like with my job, like uh, I visit suites in the first period. Uh, 
so I don't get a chance to see to watch too much. And then uh, before the games, we talk with fans, and then uh, then I have the second and third open if I want to stay. Uh, but uh, the younger guys, like they know what they're here. Like you know, they're they're making a little money this year, uh, and so like uh, and they're in good shape. And so like uh, you know, if if I if I talk with some of the other uh, the real players like uh, i'll give them a, a hint or two if, if i see something that i can help them with uh but you know i, I don't don't interfuge too much uh because you know you know they, you know they don't really need uh, the help uh but uh you know they're uh they're, they're doing really well and i and i'm you know i'm just hopeful that they can still continue uh you know at, at the end of june or july okay very nice very nice so we're going to cut to emily uh emily has a question she actually uh yeah, we're going to cut to Emily and we're going to go to David. So, Emily, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, how <laughs> are you, Emily? Good, how are you? Good. Um, my roommate is actually a huge Flyers fan along with me, and we were fortunate enough to take um, the opportunity to use the student tickets to go to 11 games this year. And that was just truly a blessing to kind of have that time with her. And, um, you know, obviously we didn't know that this was going to happen, but it was really a good, like, binder between our friendship. My question was, uh, who on the current team now do you think was most like yourself when you were a player? Well, I think uh, when I was in, in the 80s for 10 years, like I was very consistent. Uh, but, uh, you know, I like I, I liked the example of Mark Recchi. Like Mark, Mark Recchi was very consistent, a great player. And, and I, I really like what uh, Coturio does now too. He's a leader. And he he works uh, he works really hard and he's very good about what he does playing uh, offense and defense which is so key because uh, all the time I was a good uh, two way player so because uh, I know that uh, when I when I finish my career I'm actually number ten over time all, all the time for for uh, fairway fairways forwards uh, number 10 all time in the history for plus minus which means that, uh, that you're on the ice for a lot more uh, and I'm proud of that so uh, but yeah I think Couturio has, has, has done a wonderful job yeah thank you all right so Leah has a question for you Brian go ahead Leah dang that stat is so impressive <laughs> I, right. I did not realize you were top 10 and plus minus so uh -huh. um, I come from a huge hockey family my brother played my entire life and he's an older brother so I spent most of my weekends at the rink slash like all of my time um and my family are just like huge Flyers fans so when I told them that we were having this chat today they were like, so excited um but I was curious what your biggest lesson um was playing at such a high level whether that was like a lesson from like the competition or just like the teamwork it requires to really just be a successful hockey team. Um, I was curious about that. Yeah. So like uh, when I first started, like we didn't work out that much. Uh, and, and then, so like, that's why Pat Crin, Crow Coach, he, we started to do some work for us for uh, working out a little better. And so I know that from that point on, like I used to work out a lot more in the summers and that, uh, that helped my career to uh, uh, make it a little longer, 18, probably another 15 more years. And then also uh, it's, it's very helpful that because I had a sports psychologist uh, that was really good for us. So you thought about it uh, much better than you, you need to. So like uh, playing was, uh, was kind of natural, but you're always looking for ways to improve your whole self. And so that's, I think, with what I've done my whole life, you know, I've been working other, uh, other jobs and I have to learn all the time how to get better and how to stay on top of everything. So, uh, you know, for all the people listening, if you're going to school, you know, you always look, look to improve how, how, as much as you can. Thank you so much. So our next question is coming up from David. David has two questions. So I'm gonna allow him to ask one and then we'll, we'll go back to him. So David, are you there? Yeah, hey, how you doing, Brian? Pretty good. So um, going There's back, David. I was like, David's a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to ask you about basically from the 80s when you played uh, on the Flyers against the Oilers back in uh, 85 and 87 in the finals. Um, can you tell us what it was like playing against guys like Gretzky and Messier, just some of the best in the league, and how you felt your team did against those teams in general? 
Yeah, I think so. Like uh, I said, in 85, uh, that was the year that we had uh, uh, Keenan was the first year at his uh, uh, coach. And so, uh, but we still did really well. And uh, we had four rookies that were in the, uh, the team, like Tockett, Smith, Zelzer, and, and Mellonby. So like the, I was, I was 60, my sixth year in the, in the league. And, uh, but these guys p- picked it up pretty fast. But we had uh, a good teams so like with Mark Howe and Brad McCrimmon were unbelievable. And, uh, and Pelly was, was, was awesome. And yeah. if he, if he, if he would have kept uh, alive, he, he could have maybe uh, helped win a couple Stanley cups, but uh, that didn't work. And, but I know that Edmonton was powerful, like all those years. And I know that uh, in the finals, uh, we ran into injury probably. So, so like, that's probably what hurt us a lot more because uh, one year Tim Kerr was hurt and Brad McCurman was out. And, you know, you, you can't win when you have the powerful teams like they do. Uh, you have to be healthier. And then in 87, uh, Hextall was unbelievable as rookie season. And, uh, you know, I think everyone is still proud of what we did to force game seven. Uh, because uh, we didn't get get out get 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 down we were down three games to one and, and fought back to force a game seven so I think that even though we didn't win a lot of people recognize that it was probably one of the best teams in the whole world all time in 87 with the Edmonton so you know, we're just very proud of that yeah definitely thanks you're welcome all right, so we got Robin. Robin's in the house. Robin, are you here? It's Rowan. <laughs> oh, Rowan. Oh, I'm sorry. It looks like on the thing, it looks like that it connected that H. I'm sorry. Rowan, how are you, man? Good. Uh, this is a common mistake. It happens a lot. I'm um, so sorry. So what a question I had for you, um, I know draft season is coming up. Uh, what was it like for you to be drafted? And how did, like, what was that? How was that kind of? Like, how's the process? Brian, did you hear him? Uh-oh. Brian's video just went away. He might be having a difficulty. Oh, we might have froze. Just, <laughs> just hang in there, bro. <laughs> oh, Brian's like, I'm out. I'm out of here. <laughs> All right. Um, no, he's probably having some technical difficulties. Um, Leo, while we have a commercial break, do you want to show what other speakers we have for the rest of this week? I can definitely do that. So everybody <laughs> just hang break. on. Yeah, That's y'all funny. can jump. You all can jump on with your faces. I mean, I know Marissa is uh, currently stuffing her face, but <laughs> this is the rest of our week. So obviously, we're in Brian Prop right now. Tonight we have Elisa Reyes, who is yeah. from All That and voices La Cienega from the Proud Family. Um, we have Steve Blum tomorrow. Justin, do you want to tell them about Steve? Oh yeah. Steve is like responsible for like all of your childhood, like cartoon characters. He voice, he does voiceover for everyone. So when you hear his voice, you'll be like, oh, I know who that is. Um, and then Natalie Eganoff, she is a, um, sports analyst on the Mike Missanelli show, uh, 97.5, the fanatic. And she's also on, um, she's a co-host on an Eagles, um, uh, Eagles broadcast that comes on on Sundays. Um, Gary Anthony Williams and Elliot Blake are comedians. You might know Gary Anthony Williams as the voice of Uncle Ruckus uh, on the show, The Boondocks. And Elliot has done some work with Futurama. So they are really funny. You're not gonna wanna miss them. Uh, You can take the rest, Leah, you got it. Yeah, so Christian Crit Schmidt is um, on Thursday evening. So he has been a host on MTV and BET. Um, He is an activist really passionate about equity and education. Um, John Allen on Friday is the co-founder of Ivoryella, the you've probably seen on, you know, social media at some point. Um, it's a clothing brand and it's like a philanthropic clothing brand. So the proceeds go to um, the preservation of elephants um, worldwide. And then Mark Sipka rounding out our week is a comedian on Friday afternoon. All right. I just got a text from Brian. Isn't that cool? I got a text from him. He said, <laughs> um, <pretty> awesome. <laughs> he said, my power is off at my house, so I can't hear anything. I said, got it. Did your electricity go out? And he said, yes. So oh, no. there's been a storm, uh, which is probably, which has, has bounced him out of here. Um, can't really plan for that. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I can 
Let me see if I can FaceTime him. It's the best of what we can try right now. Give me a second, it's, it's going. Hey, how are you? Um, we can wrap up and what we can do is we could probably just show, um, your face from my phone on the screen. Okay. That way we can wrap you up because we want to make sure that you, uh, are able to wrap up here. Can everybody see Brian? I can see them. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, Brian, you're up. Uh, at the house, so that's why I'm using my phone now. Okay. All right. Um, Rowan, do you want to ask your question again? Uh, yeah, I can just ask you real quick. I was just asking what was it like to be drafted? He wanted to know what, what was it like to be drafted? Uh, so it was uh, at that year, like uh, I was working on the farm when I got drafted. And so, like, uh, it's not the way it is now. Like, everybody uh, goes into the, the rinks and, and wants to wait, waits to get drafted. At that time, I was working on the farm. So, like, I had to get called back from uh, Pat Quinn uh, be, before. Uh, so that uh, I had to found, I found out, like, a day, day after. Uh, but, you know, for me, it was uh, so good. I was glad because I wanted to be uh, drafted and, and it was nice to get to the Philadelphia Flyers. You know, I was, thought I was going to go draft uh, a little higher, but it, you know, it was it actually ended up worked out for me a little better because I was playing with the winners now rather than you know waiting a couple of years to go into the playoffs. All right, thank you. All right, Brian. Since we have this technical difficulties right now, we just want to say thank you so much for coming with us today um, and coming on to the. To the program and speaking with the students we've been doing this thing where we've been allowing our speakers to have like a send-off like you can say whatever you yeah. want um what do you want to leave with the students today this is on you so you're gonna take us out of here yeah okay so like i just want to, everyone to know like uh, you know, every day is important like i almost died when i had my massive stroke but thankfully my uh, family were still there in annapolis and I was, I was in the hospital pretty fast. Otherwise, uh, I might not be here today. And so I want people to know that it's always hard hope to get better. If you work it hard and, uh, and, 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 and work, do things that you have to, rehabbing is good. You know, because with Bancroft, uh, brain injury people, that's, that's uh, good for me. And, uh, and I still do it. Uh, but, um, and for the, the Philadelphia Flowers, I love doing work with them. And for my company, Wolf Commercial Real Estate, I love what I do every day. And uh, I stay positive. I'm not never down. I'm always happy. And uh, that's what life is all about. Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you. Thank you right, so thanks. much. Yes, I hope your power comes back on soon. Yeah, I will. Yeah, it's still off.